jumping from aircraft, do parachuting, swimming in the ocean, and even trying roller coasters are among the coolest experiences on virtual reality headsets. But trying scary games and experiences in an immersive, horrifying world and feeling the tension, feeling the heartbeat, is quiet the joy and fun. In this video, I will round up all of the available horror games and experiences for Gear VR from the worst to the best. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see a video like this every Sunday and also the Oculus Store news for Gear VR every Thursday. That's being said, let's start the video. Number 11. Haunted. False advertising, misleading, and cheap content. The developers in the description box of this game in Oculus Store tells you beautiful stories. There will be scary scenes, they put beautiful photos and say it's not appropriate for people with heart diseases. <laughs> this is a joke. This is a stupid, outdated, untrue, and explicit example of false advertising. The whole thing happens in less than a minute. Do you even believe it? Less than 60 seconds and you pay money for it. And what is the experience then? You just sit on a bed or something super ugly in this stupid experience and watch the stupid light to turn off and on with a funny jump scare at the very end. That's it. Where is the scary parts exactly? I wish I could refund my money because I feel like I cheated on by these developers. Please don't pay any money to these guys and if you can, report them on Oculus Store for false advertising and misleading content. Final verdict for this experience is 0 out of 10. This is garbage and should not even exist on Oculus Store. Number 10. Terror Cave HD Okay, this is an experience and not a game. You can't interact with the world at all. You can choose to go over the scary route or not a scary route at the beginning of the experience. We will focus on the scary route here. Uh, I will start with the many things I do not like about the game. The first thing I want to point out is why they call it HD. There are very poor graphics and low resolution texture in this experience. Why HD? <laughs> I can't get it. The next thing I don't like about the game is it's not scary at all. I honestly laughed out very very loud at a few of the jump scares. It is hilarious and funny and not scary at all. These kinds of jump scares are so cheap, outdated and is indication of low effort of the developers. Just watch it yourself. Unfortunately, this is, there is zero tension and heartburn moments in this experience. Next, the animations. All of the animations are so basic, weak, and cheaply made. One of the reasons you will laugh in the scary moments in this funny animation, in this funny experience, is the animations. Next, it seems that the game was free for a period of time and now the developers changed their mind and put a low price tag to get financial benefits from this game as well. Well, this experience should be free and should remain free. There is no reason to put a price tag for this cheaply made experience. And the last thing I don't like about the game is its speed. The game is so slow and boring, it will take forever to go over a cave or a tunnel and there is nothing to see and there is nothing to entertain you during this long and slow journey. I had to review the title so I didn't have any choice other than to watch this boring journey, but anyone else will immediately skip the experience and come back to the Oculus home. The only thing I do like about the game is funny moments, actually. At least you can laugh and enjoy some parts of this journey. The music and songs will help you to chill out during some parts of this experience, and yeah, that's it. My final verdict for Terror Cave is 1 out of 10. If you pick up the title for a child or someone who wants to laugh and have some chilling moments, this can be a good VR title. But for someone who wants to experience fear and tension, this game is a nightmare and a headache. Number 9. Play with me. 
This is a free game and only this factor can give a boost to the ranking of the game in my list. I will start with the things I don't like about the game. First, the controls. The game does support joystick, however, you can't even open doors or pick up items with controller. You can only do it with touchpad which is more than weird. Why they uh, add su uh, controller support when you can't do a simple thing with your controller? Next, the graphics. On my S7 Edge, the texture stutter and blurred a lot. Next, sometimes I went into the cabinets and doors and stuck in these places. There are definitely a lot of bugs in this game. Next, atmosphere is good, but it is not that much scary. Using of clowns with some weird noises cannot make me feel nervous or give me heartburn. It kinda cheap jump scares and finally animations. Yes, the animations of the clown who want to scare you or catch you is so hilarious. Again, it's not a scary at all. Why the clown moves like this? It is is he a reptile or something? I don't know. Animations are not that good in this game. Okay, let's go over the things I do like about the game. First, it's free. I want to say thank you to the developers for giving us the opportunity to try the game out for free. This is a major, major, major credit for the developers. Next, sound effects. Sound effects are kinda cool and I like it. They try their best to give us a feel of tension and they succeed for the most part with sound effects, only with sound effects. Next. Gameplay. The interaction with the world and also the fact that there is an objective in this game is definitely cool. You should gather candles from different places, solve puzzles and open the door to exit the mansion and finish the game. This is another major credit to developers with at least bother to put some interactive elements in the game. And finally, there are some tense moments in the game which makes the experience worthy. However, these moments only exist near the end of the game. My final verdict for this free game is a 4 out of 10. It's definitely worth the try and I look forward to see more contents and games from these developers in the future. Number 8. Rabbit Hole. This is another solving puzzle with a mystery and dark theme game for Gear VR, which happens in a room. I will start with the things I don't like about the game. First, controls and movement system. Yeah, it's very good that you can go anywhere you want in the room, but the problem is the game should be played using touchpad and you can't actually use the gamepad. The only function you can do with the controller is rotating and even on the touchpad the controls don't feel natural to me. You should swiping force and back to go somewhere, which is not best, the best way. Then you should double tap to go to the inventory, but come on, I mistakenly went into the inventory more than 20 times during the game, because touchpad is very sensitive. They should come up with a better controls for the game. Next, there are very annoying bugs in the game. You will stop walking, you will stuck in the little objects a lot in the room, and most annoying one, sometimes a screen become completely black but you hear the sounds, and after a while it will come back to the normal situation. These bugs will ruin the experience for you. Next, the puzzles. The puzzles in the game is very weird. This is good that you challenge yourself to solve a puzzle, but there should be enough clues, text, signs, or helps in the game itself, right? How in the world someone can solve the game puzzle in a reasonable time without googling or look up the solution? In my opinion, puzzles are not fair at this game and developer only make things complicated without giving us reasonable clues. Next, horror factor. The horror factor is not that much. It's creepy, yes, and it gives you some heartburn, but it is not that scary at all. The things I like about the game. First, freedom. Freedom to move. You can go ahead and explore the room, which I really like it. Next. Graphics and sound effects are good and help the horror factor. Next, the game atmosphere is very good and could be immersive if there was no box. And finally, game is enough long to justify its price. If developers solve the box and movement system, it can be a really good game. 
but for now, my final verdict is only a 4 out of 10. This is a slightly below the average game, which has some elements of horror and puzzle solving, but unfortunately, it has a lot of loopholes as well. Number 7. Affected the manner. It is something between a game and an experience. I will start with the things I don't like about the game. First, you simply cannot interact with the world. The only thing you can do is walk. So I can't say is this a game or an experience. Next, the scary moments are few and even in those few moments, type of horror is not definitely my favorite. This can be sub subjective, but I will say my opinion about this. The horror in the game is based on the jump scares and 90% of times they are cheap made jump scares. How in the world someone is going to be scared by flying books and shelves? It's not my type. Next, there is no story into this game. Why we should go over this mansion? What happened there? There is no information about this in the game. You are completely no one in the middle of nowhere who just want to walk through this creepy mansion and see creepy things. The developers didn't even try to put some story there and give you some background about uh, what is this, what is this place, which is so disappointing for me. And finally, the price tag. Price tag is definitely savage compared with the value of the game. The game is maximum can be finished in 15 minutes and developers charge you a lot for this super short walkthrough. That being said, let's go over some positive aspects. First, sound effects and graphics. Both are great. Texture, animations, and even movement system are really great. Lighting, the atmosphere, the texture, all of them are really, really amazing in this game. Next, it's immersive. Even with some cheap jump scares, it is still immersive and scary. You definitely feel the atmosphere, especially near the end of the game. And finally, the potential. The game has a very good potential, I think. I hope developers work on this platform and bring us a better affected to with some updates in the story, gameplay, and also type of horror. Then I would recommend it to you guys. For now, my final verdict for affected is only 5 out of 10. It's a completely average experience and if you love jump scares, then I will say go for it. Other than that, it does not force the money. Number 6. Face your fears. Okay, I have mixed feelings about face your fears experiences. On the one hand, the free parts of experience are awesome. And on the other hand, the paid extra episodes are really awful and does not worth the money. There are some doors in the main menu and you can select different doors to enter different experiences. Okay, I will start with the things I don't like about the experience. First, microtransactions. As I said, the free episodes are great and it is totally makes sense that developers put their paid extra episodes. I totally understand this point. But the problem is this paid episode has a significantly lower quality than the free ones. So I can't get it. The better experiences are free and worse ones are paid. By default, I expect the paid episode have much higher quality or at least equal quality to the free ones. This was a waste of money. Next, not all of experiences are scary. For instance, one of them is only scary to someone who is scared of heights, but to me it wasn't scary at all. However, it was fun, but nothing scary about that one. And finally, the experiences are short. Although the application offers very intense and immersive experiences, but they are so short, I wish they could create more lengthy experiences for the next paid episodes. Things I do like about the game. First, graphics and sound effects, which are awesome. Next, it's immersive, yes, you will really enjoy most of the time and, would get, and you will get some of those heartburn moments. Next, some experiences has a really cre creepy atmosphere and it is intense. My favorite was uh, the room with flying object which is very intense and awesome, especially near the end. Next, uh, 
Developers suggest some of their awesome experiences for free, which I really appreciate it. Finally, the platform that the developers develop here has a lot of room to improve. They create something with a great potential here, and I really look forward to see more creepy experiences from these guys. My final verdict for Face of Your Fears is a 6 out of 10. It is definitely worth a try and especially free experiences are great and I strongly suggest them to you guys. Number 5. Sisters. This is super short but it's a free experience with really scary elements. All of you can go ahead and try this experience out. The graphics are definitely not the best. But the sound effect and atmosphere are creepy as hell, and it can give you some really intense moments. The character design is not the scariest in my opinion, it could be a lot better, but I don't want to really complain about the game, about the experience as it is free. I hope developers can come up with a longer, better idea in the future because I think the experience has the potential to be more scary and much, much longer. As I mentioned before, I like the sound effect, the atmosphere and the whole experience and because this is actually one of the few scary free experiences on Gear VR, I would give it an overall 6 out of 10. Thank you to the developer of Sisters for giving us this scary, this scary experience as free. Number 4. Goosebumps – Night of Scares This game has a comic look but it has also some elements of horror. It definitely has a lot of jump scares and can be regarded as a scary title for Gear VR. It has a very good potential and I really like the most aspects of the game. However, I will start with the things I do not like about the game. First and most important one, a screen stuttering and freezing box. I don't know what is going on in this game, but my S7 Edge gets really hot after playing it for only 10 minutes and also it has really annoying messy screen stutterings especially at the start of the game as you move forward it gets better and better next animations i think animations are definitely has a lot of room to improve in this title sometimes the characters move really really hilarious and unnatural next type of horror it is basically based on jump scares which i'm not a fan of Maybe you like it, but I personally really dislike cheap jump scares in the scary movies or in the scary games. The thing that should scare you is atmosphere. You should feel tension and don't know what is going to happen next. And it is the real horror. Finally, shaky camera. Again, I don't know how they developed this game, but my view is in the game has a lot of shaky moments, which I never experienced in any other VR game before. It makes you feel sick, and I actually have headache after playing this game for too long. The things I do like about the game. First, sound effects and sound actings are perfect. Our voice actings are perfect. I really like them. Next, you can interact with the world. You can collect items, turn on and off lights, open closets, drawers, and so on, which is a nice feature to have. Next, movement system. Yes, you can't freely go around, but they develop a very natural control system with touchpad, which I never had any issue with the movement system, movement system in this game. Next, the atmosphere is nice and cool. It is not the creepiest atmosphere, it is a comic atmosphere, but you will uh, feel the real tension sometimes. And finally, the actual gameplay. I like hiding mechanism in the game so much. They also try to tell you a story during the gameplay, which I really like it. My final verdict for Goosebumps is a 6 out of 10, but if they manage to solve screen problems, I would give, out, give it an 8 out of 10. It's not worth the money for now, but as I said, if they fix the bugs, it is definitely worth the money and it's a very good title, and you will be more than happy to spend money on the game. Number 3 the hospital, Allison's Diary. This is a good starting point for the developers of this VR game. This VR game, in my opinion, has a very good potential, but unfortunately the developers rushed it out and couldn't utilize all of the potential of the platform here. 
I will start with the things I don't like about the game. First, it is too short. The whole game is only about 15 minutes, which is not enough. Next, there are annoying lags in transitions between the scenes, which will ruin the experience for you. Next, cutscenes. Cutscenes in this game does not make sense at all. I don't know why your flashlight should turn off during cutscenes. It's so weird. Next, you can interact with some of the objects, which is good, but it's totally pointless for the most part. Opening cabinets and boxes does not have any impact on your progress. And finally, voice actings and animations are so hilarious in this game. It's not as scary for the most part, and yet, yeah, these things have negative impacts on your immersion to the atmosphere. The things I do like about the game. The best thing about the game is that there is a very, very good graphics and sound effects. I really liked the texture in, most, in the most part of the game. Next, they paid attention to the details. I like how they put flashlight or interaction options in the game and the ability to turn your flashlight on and off. It's a nice little feature. There are also very details in the environment and seems that the developers actually respect us in this regard. Next, there is a story in this game and I will appreciate developers for trying to, uh, to connect the fear with some story in the background. However, the storyline is so shallow. Next, the game is immersive. This is the best part of this VR game. You will feel the tension in some parts of the game, which is awesome. And finally, it has some scary moments for sure. The atmosphere is creepy and it, it can be intense, especially in the middle of the game. The final verdict for Allison's Diary, the hospital, is a 7 out of 10. It is worth the money somehow if you are 100% into the horror movies and scary VR games. Number 2. Dead Secret if you love mystery and solving uh, puzzles combining with jumping moments and immersion, this game is for you. The game is about investigate the crime scene and find the killer of Harris Bullard, who was a scientist with some weird connections and background, and there are four suspects uh, which your investigation will lead to find the killer. The horror is definitely in the atmosphere of the game, not in the jump scares. It's creepy as hell, but it's not in your face, non-stop scary. It's more of a, okay, at any moment something horrific is going to happen type game. There are a lot of good things about this game. The first thing I like about the game is, the, is its value. It takes about three hours to finish all of the puzzles and solve the case, which is very good for a VR game. Next, you can experience a real immersion with this game. The developers know how to use VR medium and its advantages. Next, it has definitely scary moments when your heart will drop. Next, the graphics and sound effect looks and feels really, really amazing and help you to immerse in this universe. And finally, there is a great story with awesome details. I won't spell the story for you, I won't spoil your choices in this game, but it is very interesting. You should try it yourself. It gives you a feel of a joy when you solve a puzzle and proceed to the next scene to understand who is the real killer. There are some minor negative aspects as well. The first thing I don't like about the game is the volume of reading material in the game. It's cool when you read some documents and diaries in the game, but I think these documents and papers are numerous and it makes the game some kind of boring. Next, the controls. This is the biggest negative aspect of this game, for me. The movement system and controls are not the worst, but definitely is not the best. Uh, you can turn around without any problem, but in order to proceed to the next position, you can't walk. You should aim a point, press a button, and there is a kind of cutscene animation there which will bring you to the next position. It works flawlessly, but this mechanism is definitely not my favorite movement system in the VR. Next, it seems that your, cho your choices are really matter in the final episode of the game, but the differences is just about how you choose the options. 
not how you play the game. So the different endings are technically the same. Therefore, the replayability is very, very limited. And finally, the price tag is a little bit savage. $9.99 is definitely a high price tag even for a great game like Dead Secret. I think $4.99 is a reasonable price tag for this game, not $9.99. My final verdict for this game is an 8 out of 10. This is a great game with great atmosphere and if you love puzzles, a little bit tension and mystery, you can't go wrong with Dead Secret. And finally, the big boy. Number 1. Dread Halls. I recommend this game to anyone who has Gear VR or Oculus Rift. It is 100% worth the money. First, it will immerse you in a very addictive and interesting environment for more than 3 hours. There are excellent atmosphere, tension and scary moments in this game. You will feel the tension, feel the horror and enjoy all of these feelings. I know a lot of people out there can't finish the game because it becomes so scary near the end. The next awesome thing about this game is graphics. There are very good graphics, texture and sound effects and also very great control and movement system. Everything worked flawlessly in this VR game and it results in a very immersive and fun experience. This is one of the few VR games which are truly a game when you can discover the environment, interact with it and also move freely around. And finally the price tag. I think it is 100% worth the money you paid for, there is a great value considering the amount of joy and fun you have and also the replayability. There are only some minor points that I don't like about the game. First, the storyline. There is a shallow story into the game, but and this could be a lot better in my opinion. The story does not have a major role in the gameplay and in your experience. Next, the game is super fun and tense, but I think it had potential to have more diverse elements, objectives and enemies. Fun factor is very very good, but it's still not great in this game. I expected to see more puzzles, more diverse enemies, ghosts, devils and even some diverse hiding mechanism, like uh, alien isolation on Xbox and PS4. And the last negative aspect is pointless coin system. You gather a lot of coins in this game, but they don't have any significant impact on your progress. You can just unlock some parts of a story which is not interesting at all. My final verdict for this game is a 10 out of 10. This is a legendary, a masterpiece for Gear VR and I would strongly suggest you guys pick it up without any doubt if you don't try it out yet. Thank you guys for watching this very long video. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like to see more videos like this every Sunday, and also the Oculus Store news for Gear VR every Thursday, please subscribe to the channel right now and show your support. And yep, as always, thank you guys for watching the video.